Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Adam J. Pestridge. Welcome to another P3D video. Today, I'm going to show you how to properly um, update your P3D application, whether it be a hotfix or a update as we move into 5.2 out of 5.1 in the near future. This is how you do it without breaking anything or without having to reinstall everything. Now, I always recommend from a version move from say like you know 0.1 to 0.2 to 0.3 that a reinstallation is always best uh, it's a refresh of all your add-ons your hard drive space you can um, error check everything and then reinstall fresh and I, I and I kind of really do um, suggest that but it's not a necessary thing you have to do. If you don't wish to reinstall all your add-ons, you don't have to. The sim will just install the next level version by itself with a couple of things you'll need to do um, as well. And that's what exactly I'm going to show you. Um, obviously, I don't need to show you how to uninstall everything to reinstall everything. Um, I kind of have done this in a previous live stream. Um, so the information is there on my channel, but you kind of have to sift through it. So I thought I'd put this shorter video together as we're about to move into a update in the near future for everybody to be ready for it. Um, right, so first off, first off, make sure that your simulator is not running. Uh, make sure that there's no process of anything to do with your simulator um, running and uh, kill any th process that is. So let's get straight to it. First things first is um, before you update anything, make sure that your current machine is working and is uh, in got no problems on it whatsoever because if you install any new piece of software onto a PC that's already got issues, then you'll never know if it is the software or your PC if you then do run into trouble. So first things first, we're gonna check the Windows operating system. Bring up a command prompt for administrator, uh, just like I did, and type in sfc space forward slash scan now as one word and click enter and what's going to happen is the windows operating system is going to check itself um, before it wrecks itself um, and if there's any errors if there's any files that need replacing it will replace them with clean ones from a saved backup and this is kind of the way p3d work their software as well um, if we go to uninstall a program in the old control panel i prefer doing it this way um, and we scroll down to P3D, we see here, there we go, uh, P3D 5.1, it's all there. Um, and if you click on it, it, there's an option to repair. So I could repair my sim. I could uninstall, and that's for the content, the uh, ac content scenery, sorry, uh, not the academic. Um, so if there is an issue with your scenery, you can actually just quickly repair it. And what this does is it pulls from a clean copy that's already stored on your system and it repairs it using the default files and just replaces files that could be errored. And that's exactly what this process is all about. So uh, the, pro the process, the whole scan should really only take three to four minutes on a CPU um, that is good enough to run P3D with loads of add-ons. If it takes longer than three to four minutes, then I'd probably question that if your CPU is up to the task of version five with loads of add-ons. I tend to find that Lockheed Martin, when they put on their website about the minimum specs available for P3D, they are literally just talking about the default application and it doesn't include any of the add-ons that everybody puts in which puts more strain on a system which means you need a better CPU and a better graphics card the minimum specs they offer is really just for the default I would say the minimum specs is their recommended specs and then recommended specs is even further on from that um, so there we go Windows did not find any integrity violations beautiful that means my Windows operating 10 is working good um, I would say um, well most people would say update your graphics card um, that's good advice as well as your Windows operating system make sure you're running the very latest because when 5.2 eventually does come out it will have included any Windows updates or graphic card updates um, allowed for that were released 
released within the kind of like two or three months previous so make sure they're up to date secondly make an empty folder on your desktop called new folder um, we're going to be storing some files in here just for safekeeping just in case those files are on your C drive under application data roaming in P3D you want your P3D CFG you want your volumetric cloud CFG if you have altered it um, again, P3D CFG, you only need to save it if you have altered it. Just put it to one side. Um, and then go into Program Data, Lockheed Martin version 5, and copy these three files as well. So you've got Add-on CFG, Scenery CFG, and your Terrain CFG. Of course, you don't need to do any of this if you're reinstalling from fresh. Um, then go into your Files. And just copy any profiles that you've actually made, okay? Um, anything you've... Uh, oh, let's get rid of all these autosaves. What the hell? FSUIPC, gone mental, that is. If you've created any profiles, just shove them to the side as well, um, just in case. These are all precautions. These are not must-haves, but they're mere precautions, okay? So you just want to save everything, because what we're going to do is we're going to completely uninstall p3d version 5 we're not just gonna uninstall the content the scenery or whatever we're literally gonna take one at a time so literally click on content and click uninstall um, then go to scenery uninstall that then do the client uninstall that and it'll ask you do you wish to deactivate your product say no um, and then click on academic and uninstall that. So now you haven't got any P3D installed in your system. But what you will still have is your P3D folder still on your system. If you go into uh, program files, Lockheed Martin, you'll still have a lot of folders and files still in this section. Because when you uninstall P3D, it just removes the files that it's placed in there. That's it. It doesn't touch anything else. Um, unfortunately, um, there are other files that it won't touch either that are in program data. Um, it won't touch any files in here either. These will all remain, um, or they should at least. If they don't, then that's why we've created the backup. Um, and the same with app data roaming. Those files, those are your... Um, user files and they should remain in the sim um, once you've done that go into your account now there's two ways you can do this depending on your internet if you have got very slow glitchy internet I would not recommend downloading a 22 gig file okay um, because it's most likely going to corrupt and you know have problems um, download the ones that are just small 1.2 1. 1 point whatever gig each to that new folder on your desktop and put them all in here then once they're in here just right click on it and zip them all up into a folder um, so it's zipped up um, or you can download the p3d academic total zip 22.7 gig you can literally just right click open in a new window and it will download it just like that um, through the google browser google browser is actually a pretty good um, download manager so if there is any problems you can just click continue and it will do it the fact is it is better to download the zip file because if it is corrupted it won't allow you to open it it'll just say corrupted and then that's it and you'll have to re-download it again um, so the zip file is better but it's only good if you've got a good internet connection if you're running wireless or you've got a very glitchy with lots of dropouts I would recommend doing the single files instead basically the quicker you download this this file the simulator the better off you'll be so um, there's less chances of dropouts if you get it down very quickly if you can't download it very quickly do the individual files but don't allow those individual files to remain on your PC overnight zip them up into a zip folder and stick them on another hard drive just literally whack them somewhere else um, but then also have that extra version that you just downloaded 
somewhere sitting on your C drive or your desktop ready to install. Um, once you've downloaded the P3D version 5.2.3, whatever it is when you're watching this video, all you've got to do is click the setup and install it straight away and allow it to go through its complete setup, okay? And when I say, when I say move these files, by the way, not copy and paste them, actually cut and paste them out save these files um cut and paste it don't copy them off actually cut them out so they don't actually sit because of changes in the volumetric cloud cfg or the p3d cfg you will not see these changes because your old 5.1 configuration will actually still be in that sim and so you'll run p3d 5 point whatever on your previous version um, unless you actually delete these two files um, if you don't reinstate your scenery or terrain file your add-ons will not work they will not be linked back in um, you don't really again you don't really have to remove the scenery and terrain file i just did this in case the new installer corrupts the one that's already there. Um, and then once you've installed your new P3D, you literally just need to right click and run as administrator. And one thing to note, the first time you run your the new version of P3D, okay, it's going to take a while to load, okay, because it's got to initialize loads of different files, okay? Um, so don't expect a, f a quick installation okay because it's the first time and it's it's, it's got to do things um, when you get to your splash screen literally just jump in to any airport um, and like before you've reinstalled your add-ons by the way um, and just make sure that the sim works correctly okay again when you load into the sim it's going to take a little bit longer because it still has to generate files okay it's still you you're still installing the sim by doing this um once you've loaded into the sim into the world you can completely shut your sim down okay once once you've shut down your simulator you can now reinstate your files um not the p3d cfg or the volumetric cloud CFG, you want to check out to make sure what changes they've done if you've changed these files. Um, but the three that you definitely want to put in, you want to go to uh, Program Data, Lockheed Martin version 5, reinstate your add-on CFG, your scenery CFG, and your terrain CFG. Reinstate these three files into this folder and then restart P3D and you might have to click a few buttons for add-ons if you've got loads of add-ons suddenly. But your scenery library should look exactly like it did before um, in the previous version. Your add-ons will still be in there. Um, you don't need to uninstall any app planes or anything like that. Um, but if you load into the new version of Prepared and you know you have tweaked these two files then you can make your alterations to those two files if you wish you need to and that is it really you now have fully reinstalled or updated your uh, pc uh, your p3d your new flight sim version um, it's not as hard as, as everybody makes out and you don't have to reinstall everything although you know moving into the next version i probably would recommend to reinstall everything and then just you know clean your pc as well have a fresh start and then start reinstalling everything from scratch and if you do decide to do that always start from the ground up so the first thing you install is the mesh the next thing you install is orbex global products uh the regions the true worth um, then install any black marble products you may have um, then install any massive scenery uh or uh non-airport um sceneries um, then install your airports and then install your utilities such as weather um, or anything else like that uh, like project fly or whatever uh, literally going from the ground up anyway guys thank you so much for watching um, next week um, or in the next video sorry we're going to talk about the scenery library and how you can fix it if you have problems thank you so much for watching guys 
and thank you for subscribing to my channel and for liking my video i really appreciate that and i appreciate all the appreciation and i'm glad that my videos have really helped you guys get back into the skies and i'll see you guys in the virtual skies as well bye bye